In this video, we are going to solve a question on the Applied Electricity Exam 2011. And then in this video, we are going to consider the circuits below. We are going to find I, the short circuit current between the terminals A and B. And then II, we are going to find the resistance seen between the two terminals. And then the current in a 3 ohm resistor placed between the two terminals a and b so basically what we are going to do is that we are going to find the norton's current between a and b that is the short circuit current and then secondly we are going to find the norton's resistance that is the resistance seen between a and b and then we are going to place a 3 ohm resistor between the two terminals and then we are going to find the current that is going to flow through the 3 ohm resistor. Now let's begin with the solution. Now in this question, we have more than one source. We have three voltage sources, which means that we can combine Norton's theorem and superposition's theorem to find the Norton's current. Now to find the Norton's current, we are going to introduce a short circuit between the two terminals. That is going to be the short circuit current i n and then because we want to combine norton's theorem and superposition theorem it means that we are going to consider one of the sources at a time and then we deactivate the other two sources so first of all let's consider the five volts to act alone Now, if the 5 volts is acting alone, it means that we are going to have the 1 ohm resistor and then we also have the 5 volts. Then we are going to have this 2 ohm resistor here. But because we have a voltage source, we are going to replace that with a short circuit. And then we have the 1 here. And then the 4 will also be replaced by a short circuit, the 4 volts. So we have 1 ohm here. And then we have the terminals here. So because we want to find the Norton's current, we are going to introduce the short circuit here. That is going to be IN. Now, because we are considering one of the voltage sources, let's make this IN prime. So the next step is to find the value of IN prime or the short circuit current when the five volt is acting alone. Now we realize that this one ohm resistor has been short circuited. Now, when you consider this loop, you can go through this loop without passing through any other circuit elements except the 1 ohm resistor. So the 1 ohm resistor is short circuited. Now the same applies to the 2 ohm resistor if you want to consider this big loop. So realize that both the 1 ohm and the 2 ohm resistors have been short circuited. So we can redraw this circuit as having the 1 ohm resistor connected to the 5 volts And then we have I n prime. So now let's find the value of I n prime. Now using Ohm's law, I n prime is equal to five divided by one. Now five divided by one is five. So I n prime is five amperes. So after finding the value of I n prime, we are going to do same for the 6 volts and then the 4 volts. So this time we are going to make the 6 volts act alone. Now if the 6 volts is acting alone, 
then it means that we are going to have something like this we have the one ohm here and then we have the short circuit we are going to have the two ohm resistor and then we have the six volts then we have this one ohm here and then we have the short circuit and then we have the terminals a and b and then the short circuit current so this time we are going to make it i n prime prime so we are going to find the value of i n prime prime that is the short circuit current when six volts is acting alone now like we did for when five volts was acting alone this value this resistor has been short circuited because we have only one resistor in this particular loop and then when we consider this loop also we realize that this one ohm has been short circuited so it means that we can redraw this circuit as we have the two ohms resistor connected in series with the six volts and then we have i n prime prime here so to find i n prime prime we are basically going to use ohm's law so i n prime prime is equal to we have 6 divided by 2 which is equal to 3 amperes so the value of i n prime prime is equal to 3 amperes so now we are going to consider the 4 volts when it's acting alone So again, let's redraw the circuit. So we are going to have 1 ohm and then the 5 volts leaves. So we have the short circuit. And then we have the 2 ohms. The short circuit. Then we have this 1 ohm and then the 4 volts. So this time we are going to have i n prime 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 again this 2 ohm has been short circuited because when you consider this loop we have only one resistor and then when you consider this bigger loop you also have only one resistor that is the one ohm so both the 1 ohm and the 2 ohm resistors have been short circuited. So the circuit can be simplified as we have 1 ohm here. Then we have the 4 volts. And then the short circuit current. That is I n prime prime prime. So we can find the value of I n prime 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 now always consider the current to move from the higher potential to the lower potential so always current is going to leave the positive terminal of the voltage source now realize that i n prime 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 is moving in a direction to oppose the flow of this current so the value of i n prime 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 is going to be negative four divided by 1 which is negative 4 amperes so this is going to be the value of i n prime 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 now to find the total norton's current or to find the actual norton's current or the short circuit current 
between the two terminals then we are going to add all the in components so in which is the Norton's current is going to be in prime plus in prime prime plus in prime 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 so for in prime we got five amperes and then i n prime prime we got three amperes and then for i n prime 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 we had negative four amperes so five plus three is eight and then eight minus four is four so the short circuit current seen between the terminals a and b is equal to 4 amperes so let's move on to find the Norton's resistance or the resistance seen between the two terminals so now let's go back to the question now from this we are going to find Rn so let's redraw the circuit now we all know that when you have a voltage source it's going to be a short circuit and then when you have a current source, it's going to be an open circuit. However, we have only voltage sources here. So we are going to have one ohm and then the short circuit. We have two ohm and a short circuit. And then we also have another one ohm here and the short circuit. So we are going to look in this direction to find the Norton's resistance. Now, any two resistors are connected in parallel because when you go through any of the loops, you realize that you pass through two resistors. And so one is in parallel with the two ohm resistor. This one ohm resistor is in parallel with the one ohm resistor. And then this two is in parallel with these two so we can take any two at a time so first of all let's consider this one and then this one so rn is going to be let's say one prime sorry one parallel one parallel two so that is one times one divided by 1 plus 1 and then that is going to be 1 times 1 is 1 and then 1 plus 1 is 2 so we have 1 over 2 so it's going to be 1 over 2 times 2 divided by 1 over 2 plus 2 now 1 over 2 times 2 is 1 because 2 will cancel 2 so we have 1 and then 1 over 2 plus 2 is equal to 2 whole number 1 over 2 now 1 over 2 is 0 0.5 so we have 2.5 and then 1 divided by 2.5 is 0 0.4 so we have Rn to be equal to 0 0.4 ohms now let's find the current when a 3 ohm resistor is connected between the two terminals. Now what we've done is that we found IN which is the Norton's current. So we had 4 amperes. And then we found the Norton's resistance that is 0 0.4 ohms. So what we are going to do is we are going to use current division rule to find the current flowing through the three ohms resistor so we can draw the circuit to better understand what we are doing so we have this Norton's current i n and then we have it we have r n connected in parallel with it so this is Rn. 
that is 0 0.4 ohms and then we have the 3 ohms resistor connected here so the current approaching this junction is the Norton's current which is 4 amperes and then we are interested in finding the current flowing through the 3 ohms resistor so using the current division rule then we can see that the current flowing through the 3 ohms resistor is equal to the value of this resistor that is Rn that is 0 0.4 divided by the sum of both resistors so we have 0 0.4 plus 3 and then we are going to multiply by the total current approaching the junction or IN which is 4 so we have 0 0.4 divided by 3.4 times 4 so 0 0.4 divided by 3.4 times 4 is equal to 0 0.471 amperes so this is the current that is going to flow through the 3 ohms resistor if it is placed between the two terminals A and B.